Hello, Internet. Welcome to the Nerdsmith Power Hour. I am Angela, this is Logan, and we are here on your lunch break to talk D&D, TTRPGs, and whatever the heck we want! Because it's our show and not yours. No, that's not our tagline. That's another tagline. I like that, though. Um, that's our show, it's not your... Oh, is it somebody? Is it that. stolen? Oh, okay. Drag queens are vicious if we steal oh, from I them. I have no idea what it's from, so... We won't hear the end. It's from Uh, which is a show starring two drag queens on YouTube, and oh, that's their pitch. I love Netflix. that name. Okay, yeah, we can't yeah, see that. Uh. <laughs> you should watch it. It's real good. It's Trixie Mattel and Katya Zamolochkova, which I know her name because I took Russian in college and I can pronounce it. <laughs> I I struggled with Svetlana last night, so 
Katarina Zamolochkova is her name. That's, that's she's from Boston. That's really cool. And she... Hi, dog. Hi. Yeah. Were you busy? Dogs are right. really cool. Bye. Didn't even look at me. Rude. Nice that she ducks under the camera, though. Mm -hmm. If she couldn't, I'd be very worried. By the way, I just um, I started following that was this the dog person. walking, not anything else. Uh huh. I started watch. Uh, I started following this person on TikTok. She owns a farm with her husband, and she started buying animals. And so she has a bunch of baby farm animals. And so she just films feeding the animals every morning. <laughs> And she keeps bringing animals home. And that home. pays for the farm. Well, they're not breeding or producing anything yet. She's starting. She just decided, I'm going to have an animal section in our farm. And now she's in the process of, like, working on it. Uh, but so she's got llamas, which I've learned a bunch about llamas this week because of her. She knew a bunch of llama facts. And I'm like, this is really interesting. Uh, because somebody asked what the difference between llamas and alpacas were. What is the difference and, between llamas uh, and alpacas? So alpacas can grow to be like 200 pounds. Llamas can be three to 400 pounds. Oh my God, They're way really? bigger than alpacas. And okay. they are sometimes, sometimes uh, alpaca farmers will have uh, llamas mixed in with their herd to like help protect them because they're a little more territorial and bigger. Mm. So they like hang out with the alpacas. So, um, so the alpaca, they alpaca light. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. They alpaca for a uh, weekend. They're also, uh, their wool is of a slightly different texture. Alpacas is a little finer and softer. Um, and uh, the other thing, oh, the other thing was somebody asked, when are we going to see baby llamas? And she's like, a very long time. These llamas are like five to six months and they need to be one to two years before they'll start breeding. And then llamas are pregnant for 350 days. <laughs> Almost wow. an entire calendar year before they give birth. That's, you have to imagine that's awesome. that they're I mean, that's great information. You have to, I, that's why I was like, you know what? TikTok's not all waste. I, sometimes you learn about animals. I don't think anything. Anything that makes you um, feel good and makes you happy is not necessarily I a waste. To, I just necessarily is a good heroin. Well, I was gonna say it's my makeup that I now have. But apparently I got some good feedback on my makeup from last night and I did it like a half an hour. So apparently I'm doing something right for webcam, right for webcam. Do you hear that viewers? My makeup doesn't look good close up <laughs> only in the blur of the webcam and whatever beauty filter zoom uses <laughs> is very helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, so I so the whole point of this story was I was following this uh, this woman who has a uh, farm, and she just bought a dog that is a Saint Bernard Doodle. Um, it's a poodle and Saint Bernard mix, so he looks like a little Saint Bernard puppy with like fluffy, but it's curly. And I looked up Saint Berdoodles, which is a hilarious word. Saint Berdoodles is um, great. Uh, they're freaking huge. Okay. <laughs> Like are huge. But think about how smart a poodle is. Like you get something that big and that ornery. <laughs> That's true. Um, but but he's very very cute. Um, and and that's half of her videos now are just this cute little puppy. But she does this thing that if you do at her videos on TikTok, like you make your own copy with her video playing on the side uh, and you request an animal, she will film pet giving the animal a pet or a boop for you. <laughs> like you can put your hand out and she'll pet the animal Aww. for you. It's very cute. It's awesome. And all of her, uh, half of her, all of her goats are named after office characters. So there's Angela and Pam and and Dwight and Jim. That's hilarious. It's very good. So how are you doing today, Luke? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm how, exhausted. How are you recovering? Coming, yeah, coming down off of our big uh, our big shenanigans uh, premiere last night, uh, which Woo! which was. I was wired after last five night. intense weeks of work trying to lead up to that. Just an amazing amount of work. Um, and and it, it paid a beautiful off. Beautiful job. Everybody it was so off. happy. And I Minimal got, technical difficulties. Yeah. I got all we I got the, the new the new MIDI keyboards all set up now, so I can actually do audio stuff and you know, um, audio cues and things with that. So that'll be getting mm -hmm. used more and more as we go. Although I've got a well, I do remember the three or four keys I program now. I'm just gonna get to the point where I'm like, oh, I need to. We're gonna need to give you, you stickers know. or like. Um, I'm gonna use one a, of those. I'm gonna use wet erase markers. Program... 
Okay, I was gonna say it, some of them have like programmable button images that like show up. If no, they're, no, no. Like, this is a literal screens, keyboard, but, uh, but it's only gotcha, a two gotcha. octave keyboard, and so I can switch it's octaves to add more buttons. Oh, it's a musical. Keyboard. It's a musical okay. keyboard. Sorry, I keyboard if it was is a mechanic. Like, musical keyboard. No, that's fine. If uh, if it was a mechanical one, I was gonna point you to somebody who uh, makes custom keys. Like she pops mechanical oh, yeah, keys yeah. out, and then we'll make a punny no, picture for, on it. For so that, like, drawing Patrick Star on SpongeBob for the P key, and then putting it back. Like she's slowly replacing all of her keys. For that, I've got my Stream Deck, which I absolutely love. That's but what I, I thought need, you were sort of uh, talking about. I need. I want the bigger version. the The smaller version is is great, but it just doesn't have enough of what I want. There's a few other commands I'd like to put on there. You can do folders and things, but as we get more and more into it and have more and more options. I want to do more with it. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. The, the keyboard's great. So, uh, but yeah, so the thing is, I'll be able to change octaves on it uh, to do different series of keys. So, I need to be able to put multiple information on one key. So, um, you know, so for octave, you know, for, for C1 and 2, it'll be these codes. For C3 and 4, it'll be, you know, et cetera. So, gotcha. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't blame you for wanting to play with toys. Oh, well, and I bought it. I mean, I bought it for season one, and I, and I just never got around to getting it working, and I, I finally got it working. So that works out great. And Did you uh, remember to put that in as a business expense? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I write everything off. Good. I mean, I know you do, but what did you do for taxes? <laughs> um, no, this was this was a purchase. God, this may not have been purchased last year. It might have been a purchase in 2018. Um, so it's been sitting around for a while and now, which is funny because when I pulled it out, it looked great. And now it looks dirty, dusty as hell. I got to clean today. I was going to lift it up and show everyone, but then I'm like, yeah, never mind. I don't want to touch it. I got to clean it. So I, it's I went to a craft store today. I heard you got something that you want to, to play around with. I'm going to, I'm going to work on these people who watch shenanigans might know what these are. Uh, uh, I, I think them. most people also, will know what they are. What they're for. How oh, there that? you go. Okay. Um, and then I also bought oh, these I little potion this. bottles, and I bought a. J I dropped a fan, but other than that, um, uh, this is leather strip dregs. Oh, you bought a pack the of leather thongs. section. I did, um, but I'm going to be braiding them together and trying to make a potion bandolier with those little bottles. So leather we'll straps are called now. thongs. It's Latigo Lace Remnants. So hopefully there are some long enough that I can How make How much was that? Because usually those things are expensive. $8.50 off. That's amazing. So it was $4. That's really cool. Tiny bottles are one of my favorite things to, to play around with at the table. I just I love tiny bottles for all sorts of different things. I used to make puzzles with them. And yeah, really cool stuff. And I'm, I'm working on a cosplay... Uh, so I have a vest. I, I bought a vest that actually fits me. Um, hard to buy vest, ladies. You know what I'm talking about. It's hard to buy vests that fit. Um, and I got I one, and I got these too. really. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and so I got these like silver buttons that have pretty little patterns on them to replace nice. the plastic buttons that are on it. Because I'm, I, I made a, I made a dirty wizard boy, and I <laughs> decided I need to make him fancier. So I'm giving him these. Nice. I used um, to collect buttons. Yeah, I have a couple that I liked replacing the buttons on shirts when they looked boring. I'm like, why not have fleur de lis on everything? I put mine on cardstock and in frames. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I also uh, recently got a, a sewing ring. I don't sew, uh, but I got a sewing ring because I want to display my enamel pins on it. Put some thick you fabric on donut? it and then hang out. On yeah, pain donut. <laughs> Uh, but I have some thick fabric and I'm going to put that and you can hang that on the wall and it's just like a nice little circle that I can pin my, my enamel. Tessa um, had this little pin cushion that got, looks like a donut. No, and no. I was like, it's a pain, pain it's ring. A, it's a wooden ring that has two, it has a smaller ring inside it and a little screw that like loosens it and tightens it. The idea is you can put fabric between the two rings and tighten them and that's something you embroider on oh, yeah, the fabric. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Like, okay, I know what it is now. Okay, yeah. yeah. So so I got one of those at, at a Goodwill for like 75 cents and usually it was going to be like six bucks to get something like that. And so I got the ring and I'm going to put uh, some thick fabric mm. on it and use it as a pin display. I can okay. Hang it on the wall and then I can take them out pretty easy. And, yeah, yeah. And so it'll look nice. I'm excited. Very uh, cool. Because I have a lot of pins now because pins are... 
I do too. Ren All of opened guys. my eyes though because suspenders blew the game wide open. <laughs> well, either good replacement for a lanyard or double the space. Double the space. Well, I don't like it on my neck. Look like you work at I never really. Fridays. I end up not wearing my pins because it's just too heavy. Yeah, I have too many big pins. And so, yeah, including our rainbow dragon egg pin, which I love. And it's oversized and it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, Autumn, that's a good point, too. I um, I got a little one and a big one. So maybe I'll use one for, um, for painting on. I was tempted to... I almost got an embroidery kit today so that I could do a little bit of embroidering for, um, for Curie. Uh, but I might just go I, I might just go whore. I might just go uh, s like look around um, Goodwills and find something that's already been embroidered that I can just you know use. They do those like they frame stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a very specific uh, Goodwill at our um, in our town that's a that's a hospice Goodwill. <laughs> there's lots of like little old lady stuff and so there's a lot of embroidery. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and you art very well, Autumn. Um, I, I get you. Nice. I can sew a button. That's about it. <laughs> Andy can't sew a button. He, he comes sew. to me for sewing buttons. I need to learn how to sew though, because I want to make I want to make puppets. I know. I'm just inspired by Perception Studios. You and I talked about that last night. That their new puppet looks amazing. He's huge, and his mouth moves really cool. It's like a little a little mailbox. And so that's I assume he's being operated like this. I don't that's know. how I assume it works based on based on how it um how it opens because it doesn't seem. I like I really looked. This. His head is way too big. Uh, it's, I, it's it's I was um, talking to Danny a little bit, and I still don't know who plays mm -hmm. Brian, but um, I know on the show they make fun of Brian as having a big head. But looking read, looking over puppeteering and 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 creating Muppet and puppet. Uh, um, uh, videos and things they talk about not wanting to make the head too big you know you don't you don't want it, it, they just become kind of ridiculously overburdening you know and your arm gets tired a lot faster uh but uh, and it just it just looks heavy every time it moves it's like oh my gosh it's just but anyway yeah bro but he looks great he looks like um who's that mascot the the hockey mascot um that everyone talks oh, about gritty gritty yeah Is it i don't hockey? know if i've told you yeah it's hockey um Soup time! <laughs> it's soup time! <laughs> See, now we need the power hour, but like with with a bowl of soup and some steam coming off it, because that's just tradition now that it's your lunchtime with some soup. Um, or I should make a Campbell's can that says power hour on it, and that'll be our new ad. Soup time. Soup time. Um, so there's a person um, that I follow that's on the... I'm really crooked. I'm so sorry. I'm like very not in center right now and it's probably my fault for fiddling around um so i follow this person uh riot rogers she's in she was in england she's part of rooster teeth uh uk and she's a cosplayer and she put together a costume that injures my soul to think about it's a it's a sexy girl gritty named gritney <laughs> and they took a picture of Gritney. So it's it's it is literally just a full fur suit with bo with like boob shapes. Sure. Um and she took like a boudoir picture in the outfit on like a bed of roses. <laughs> and then went to a hockey game and got Gritty to sign a printed poster of the Gritney poster. <laughs> it's so upsetting. <laughs> So that was that was something I discovered that I wish I hadn't. Wow. Did you find that's, it? <laughs> um, that's special. <laughs> She's amazing though. She is an incredible cosplay. Um hockey, Chad, hockey's one of those things that I didn't get until I went to a hockey game and actually really liked it. It was fun. Um it, Sorry. it was Mighty different. Ducks. I'll Maybe play that's... hockey all day long. Yeah, maybe that's where I'm getting it though. It was novel. I've been um, Tampa has a um, has a team, uh, the Lightning, and um, that's because uh, Lakeland, which is right near Tampa, at least was the Lightning capital of the U.S. or something for a few years. Um, mm -hmm. But so the, the Lightning have a cool thing where at the top of their arena or their 
yeah, I guess the arena. Um, there's a there's a Tesla coil. So when the when the team comes out, they turn the Tesla coil on, and it's like zzz, it's like this big thing in the center. It's very that's, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, it's it's it, it's a fun time. I've I have been to more boring sports. <laughs> Plus, it's really cute when they get the kids to play, yeah. like during halftime, like the little children who are like learning how to skate. <laughs> I feel so bad about it. Uh, I, I I I really when I was younger obviously loved the Mighty Ducks and all the movies there and I played a lot of street hockey. I really enjoyed it. I find it a lot more interesting than like baseball. I, I can't stand baseball. Baseball is way more fun to play than it is yes. to watch. I enjoyed playing it's... baseball. I was horrible at it, but I enjoyed playing baseball. Um, and I like baseball movies because there's a, you know, the message. I actually, it's, it's rarely about I am baseball. Not a, yeah. <laughs> I, I am not a huge sports guy. I'm not into professional sports at all in any respect, mm -hmm. but I love sports movies. I absolutely love, because you're right. They're very rare. They're more usually about people than they are about the sport. And, uh, and they're about to telling stories and usually they're heartwarming and awesome. Unless, uh, Chad, baseball is very good for sitting down and getting drunk the whole afternoon. Uh, unless it's hot. I'd rather do that at home. Then it's just awful. I would much rather do that yeah. at home than outside. Plus, they don't <laughs> serve tequila, so. I'm sure I'm not going to try to get drunk on beer. You know how much of that I'd have to drink? I was just looking at my little glass bottles here. If anybody has any recommendations for how to decorate these, I don't necessarily want to fill them with liquids. So I was thinking paint, like watered down paint and filling it. Uh, and then, and then like shaking it up and letting it kind of glaze um, the if inside. If you want, to, yep, that's one good way. If you want to make it look like liquid, uh, they uh, Vallejo Paints mm -hmm. sells a a liquid uh, like a resin. Like a dry it's kind of like a resin, but yeah, you could just use resin too, paint it and and dye it, um, and make it sure. actually look like liquids and things. Yeah, I'll think about it. I'm not sure yet, but I want to decorate them. <laughs> washi tape on the outside. That's cute. Do I have any? I have I have space washi tape. That could be fun. Space um, do not have sp pants. <laughs> spants. I think it's just, I think the, oh, you don't double the P. It's just spants at that point. Kajari, that's, Anne, Anne, that's such a good idea. Putting Vinnick in it. Yo, we have Anne here. Why didn't you just ask Anne? Anne knows everything. I didn't know if she was still there. And then give them to me. <laughs> I actually have purple Vinnick. That could be really cool. But I'd have to glue it shut. Like, I'd need to make sure it, um... Yeah, it's too sugary. It would probably be like, this is how you get ants in your cosplay collection. It's by putting uh, glitter liqueur in your bottles. Yeah. <laughs> I always consider purple to be, um, this is just like the, I don't know, maybe it's the Diablo? Blue is mana, red is health, and purple's both. There's, there's a, I don't remember what the, It's uh, probably Diablo. Hot that glue sense. is a really good thought, Franz. Uh, hot glue, as long as it's really hot. hot and you pour it all at once. Yeah, otherwise yeah. you'll get lay weird layers in it. I think about it. I have a bunch. What is this, 12? I have a couple yeah. I can test. Yeah, don't use cool melt. Use hot melt. <laughs> God damn it. Red health, blue mana, purple drink. <laughs> oh, So, if anyone was watching Shenanigans last night... We all got new friends. He's so soft. Peanut's so soft. I had so many names lined up because I assumed we were all getting one. So, but we're not. We're just all sharing Peanut. Um, I I kind of have a headcanon now that everybody gives him a different... That might work. <laughs> yes, I know, Tessa. This is the role-playing challenge of your life. Life, yeah. To play a character who does not like animal, like furry animals. Uh, That's true. Yeah, I was gonna say he likes animals. <laughs> we're gonna need emotion. We're gonna need emotional support. They they just have to be cephalopods. Mm -hmm. She likes cephalopods, not mammals. Uh, but yeah, we uh, we had a really good time last night. Oh. Um. <laughs> this serious and that's awesome. Banana Brothers is delightful. I'm a big fan. Um and uh I'm I'm very I'm very glad you guys enjoy the show um, when you guys hop over. That's that's fun. Um yeah, I'm so excited for the season. The season is going to be weird and I mean, okay, so I guess Jesse brings it up. Um so I I have a little 
Yes, everyone is is welcome to to modify their peanut as long as they don't uh, like paint him or anything. <laughs> oh my god, Anne. <laughs> Rylander is awesome. <laughs> That's what I should. No, that that'll be weird. I was gonna say I should store things in him, but I realize it's all gonna just come out of his butt if I turn him into a purse or something. <laughs> Love it. It's where the coins little, come from now. Zipper. <laughs> it's where our no party fund anymore. comes from. I know. Um, but but yeah, so I had a, I had a good time last night. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to Spelljammer. Uh, it seems like there's going to be... We're going to be exploring some stuff we've not really done before in Shenanigans. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. No, this is a whole new territory for me. I really want to challenge myself. Uh, step out of my comfort zone a lot with, with D&D and... Um, and try to try to find try to also put these huge roadblocks in my way because running Spelljammer is proving to be extremely different from how I would run a science fiction, even a goofy science fiction style game. Why is that? Um, well, mostly because I have to think about uh, you know like like early one of the one of the things we were doing earlier was was um, in in one of the Goblin episodes we did for our for our subscribers. Um, you know, I, I described wires, wiring, and I realized afterwards, I'm like, oh, there wouldn't be any wiring. It's the fantasy campaign. You know, there, it's magic. There's no electricity Talks. necessarily. Talk to me, Logan. Um, I've got ideas. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Uh, but it's just, it's well, just, I, I, it's one I'm of those things. Saying... So, and then halfway through the, the campaign, you know, last night, the, the game last night, I was asking Kyle, uh, what he was looking for. And he was like, oh, I want to look for panels, you know, behind walls, wiring, this type of thing. I'm like, yeah, no, it's a, it's a wooden ship. You are on a... Uh, a sailing vessel just like you would on Earth. It just happens to be going through space. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's kind of this this challenge of, of remembering that this is mo a lot more like Treasure Planet than it is, mm -hmm. like, science fiction. Well, what, what I imagine there is going to be, like, lots of, of crystal accents, lots of, like, root, like you described runes before. Um, one of the things that I really dig from a, an urban fantasy that I was... Um, I, I saw was using plant life as a kind of wiring, like the natural life essence of plants being something that can uh, transmit information. Um, so the idea of having like vining growing in spots uh, instead of wires uh, is an interesting aesthetic. Um, I mean, that's a twofold option because if you're trying to create oxygen in a space as well, having greenery that doubles as a means of of information or, or magic transmission while also providing oxygen, I think that would be an interesting, like, symbiotic multi-use system that, that could exist. Um, yeah. If not on the Spelljammer, or certainly on another ship, I think, would, would that be a cool way to interpret, like, space druids? <laughs> that their ship is just, Absolutely. like, organically... Like, the ship is alive. It's, it's not made of wood planks. It is made of a tree. Like like how they do, um, how trees are, uh, some people, they kind of sculpt the living tree to make furniture. Um, I, I'm, I'm terrified to sit in one of those chairs, but it's cool. It takes years to do, but then they like slowly force the, the branches into particular shapes so that they can just basically cut a piece of furniture off the tree. Wow, I haven't thought of Tenchi Muyo in a really long time. It's my only reference for harem anime, uh, and I haven't thought about it in years. <laughs> uh, hi, Heath. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're chatting a little bit about uh, shenanigans last night and Spelljammer Tech and Treasure Planet, <laughs> which I have to watch again at some point. Um, it's been a while. But uh, yeah, as as as... Kyle said last night, they have a cat lady, we have a cat lady. It's basically the same thing. Now That's we just true. need a little mimic blob that floats around. And... You had that last season. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> a bevy of ideas heading your way, Logan. This, uh, this game has been very interesting, and, and I am always open to, to ideas from, from uh, other DMs out there. Um, but I've I, had I more to... advice and, and ideas flow from people and friends and other DMs in this than any other 
game I've ever it's run. It's just it's just really unique. It makes it gets your juices flowing creatively yeah. in a way that just I'm doing a fantasy game doesn't necessarily always do. Um, I, I Chad brings up an excellent point. That is, uh, that is something I, I have. Crossover. That is something I have considered, um, and I instantly rejected. So, um, I, <laughs> I think we could get. I think we could make some bonus content happen. I definitely think bonus content could happen. <laughs> Absolutely, non-canonical uh, crossovers. Absolutely in the cards. Um, um, oh, oh, oh! You're talking. I know what you're talking about. Then you're talking about that other thing. Then yes, I'm definitely interested in hearing those ideas as well. So. We made a couple of jokes last night that I think are tangentially related to the thing he's talking about. I think they are, yes. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, we um, I would I would love to I would love to do a chaotic goodness crossover. I think that would be fun. <laughs> um, so let's see, what else do we have to talk about? Oh, so we're no longer discover our PG power hour, but um, discover our BG has risen from the ashes. Um, I am, uh, I'm bringing back the, the brand a little bit. Um, I'm currently, today will be day two. I will have to do it when we're done here with the office. Office? Power hour. Why did I say office? Um, so, uh, if you look up Discover RPG on, uh, TikTok or Instagram, uh, and Discover RPG show on Twitter, which will always make me sad that we couldn't get that, um, we, uh, I'm going to be putting out, uh, daily, uh, I'm just calling it today's random story prompt. So I don't have to commit to, to calling it a daily random story prompt. Um, I'm going to be using different card games and random generators that I have, and I'm going to be generating premises for story ideas, whether that's plot or, uh, NPC, like characters, plot, items, stories that are in your world things like that um and i'm gonna be putting up videos of me randomly drawing that stuff and uh and basically asking people to share their their ideas from those premises um it's just as i said in the first video i just want us to all inspire each other a little bit so i'm gonna be putting those out i'm very excited they're not hard to produce i feel like i can sustainably record a shit ton of them and have like a month's worth of them ready to go um but I hope uh, I hope people enjoy them because I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to keep that up. I think that'll be a nice start to bringing Discover RPG into something. Yeah. Um, um, I was gonna say I was gonna make a joke uh, about making sure that your no. sexy dice, you know, the the sexy bedroom dice huh. don't don't get involved. right. You can't mix them. Together. However, I, dice. I, um, I just uh, remembered that the other day on uh, Perception Studio was doing a stream. Danny and uh, mm -hmm. and Ryan were playing. Uh, uh, Jackbox games because one of their 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 normal shows had fallen through for the night, and yeah. they had talked about uh, the idea of at a certain uh, threshold for their their bonus content, uh, they are going to play a role playing game that normally uses two d six, but all their results they're going to use are sexy dice, and so whatever the game the role playing game so like if they're using um, playing um, uh, a monster of the week. Uh, they would then roll the two sexy dice, the two d sixes from the sexy dice game, uh, and uh, and the result would be whatever they get. So I was like, that's uh, that's mm -hmm. that's very interesting. I'm very excited to see what they do. <laughs> roll to hit spank hair. Spank hair, perfect. <laughs> um. So so yeah, I um I'm excited though. I've got um I've got a couple of things. I'm gonna I'm not sure if I'm gonna try to exhaust one. Or I'm gonna just rotate every time just to get a variety. But right now I'm using Once Upon a Time, which is a storytelling card game that has uh, cards that represent the different elements of a story. So there's characters, things, places, events, and aspects, which are basically just adjectives um, and endings. So there's like the moral of the story or whatever happens. So one of them was like, and the prince was cursed for his misdeeds. It was one of the endings. Um, so I'm gonna pull randomly from each of those decks and then present them. And you can shuffle them around in whatever order you want. You can place importance on whichever ones you want and focus. And I, I just thought it would be a really neat kind of just daily uh, reminder of, of like, you can make shit out of anything. 
Um, but so I have Once Upon a Time card game. I have a game called Fun Employed, which is a, uh, it's a really fun game. Uh, is has been stellar for creating characters. I was so happy with how this came out. Um, it got inspired by somebody pulling a Cards Against Humanity deck out and building their character, like their personality and their bonds and, and flaws and stuff from from a Cards Against Humanity deck. My favorite one was somebody's flaw was being a dick to children. <laughs> it was very good. Um, but so I got inspired. I have Cards Against Humanity, but I'm not sure I'm going to, or rather I have a print and play version. Um, not sure if I'm going to use it. Uh, Super Fight uh, is one of the ones I have, so I'm gonna think about using Super Fight. Super Fight's a fun um, one. Uh, fun Employed is really good because there's literally an entire deck of of careers, of occupations. So you could say what 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 is or was my occupation, and you can pull that card, and it's like pop star or uh, bodyguard or <laughs> chef. Like they're just very reasonable occupations to have. Um, but then all the other things are aspects of a character, uh, aspects of a person that could be a detriment or a benefit. And you have to, in the game, you basically, you get five cards and you have some time to switch out from a central like layout of a few face up cards. And, and the first person who's ready to give an interview for that position says all right i'm done and then you're stuck with whatever else you have in your hand and you have to use each card as pitching yourself for right. the job that's awesome and it is really really funny before we played uh uh, before we played countless heroes we were playing a game of fun employed and andy got uh like good hair licks everything and there were a couple of other ones and he decided his character was a dog Perfect. and in the middle of his interview got on the table on all fours <laughs> like i was like what that's is happening hilarious. <laughs> it was the first i think that's the first time i saw what a complete jackass my husband can be <laughs> he was really kind of like chill and then all of a sudden i saw that and i went who are you i love it I married him anyway good uh so we <laughs> yeah, so i have a bunch of those and I'm excited to uh, to bust them out. That's and, awesome. And I'm very excited to see what you come up with. I, now that I'm no longer working on shenanigans, I do have an interview actually with one of our audience members right now, Chad, that I need to finish up as well for Discover RPG. Uh, That's right. That, uh, that when, I thought you it was do, a very like, good article. There's a lot of great information in there. I really want to get it out there. I just haven't had a chance to finish it. Um, yes. But your talk about all these games reminded me that something I, I, I want to work on. Um, I'm working on, an, on a new podcast. Chad, idea you've right already now. done it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, Chad, you, <laughs> we've already done the Logan interview. I just haven't put it out yet. Um, we, we already recorded it. So. Um, oh, God, what did I forget? What did I, what did I have to do? Huh. Uh, huh, huh, huh. Um, yeah, basically what, what Chad I gotta worry that I, 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 huh. I have this strange fear that, that uh, I start to sound like Mickey Mouse there. Huh? Um, huh? Huh? Uh, I have so, a half-decent Mickey Mouse laugh. Yeah, yours is pretty good. Um... So I'm working on a different podcast idea already, and of course, me and my brain. Um, the other day I saw a uh, a British show that I'd never seen before, which is strange because it's been around forever. Um, it's called Would I Lie to You? And on the oh, show, yeah. uh, basically I'm for well those, aware for those that don't shows. know what the show is, basically uh, the, the, mem the audience members are, uh, or the players are given, celebrities, comedians, are given um, several things called cards that could theoretically be something that they've done in their life. Uh, and and during the course of the show, some of them are true and some are not, but they have to tell the, everyone else what they are. The panelists have to guess they have to if it's true or not. do a story and they get questions. They have to uh, answer the questions yeah. satisfactorily and, enough to um, convince them And I saw, the one I saw was uh, Trevor Noah, that he used to prank call people and make them believe that he was Nelson Mandela. And... It's hilarious. I'm not going to tell you if it's true or not. You can go find the, the video and, and watch it. Uh, but uh, it's funny because you have to... What, what I loved about it was after watching several of these, you learn that people go into it when they read the initial card. Even if it's true, they have to try to kind of pretend that it's a shocking yeah, like thing. like flub it a little bit. And you have, to, or... you have to kind of find this neutral ground between them. And I'm always very interested in that because as a, D, as a DM, those types of tools are very useful i thought what a cool premise so is, your, for... is your job to just 
try to get them to react opposite to what it is. So if it's true, you well, want them you... to not think you're true. Basically, you don't right, want yeah. them to pick the true answer. Well, well, okay. you what you you want? I think you get points if they are wrong. So if it's not okay. true and they say true, if they you get, get points. Yeah. False, then you get so points. So that's if the. They don't, you're lying yeah. and you're telling the truth you might get points yeah if it's true or not and i yeah, I, mean, I don't know i've only watched so clips good. of the show i've actually haven't watched a full episode of the show um and there were some bye, i had i had some gm's day to use too bye um but it's yeah it's it's i don't know it was a very cool premise i went this would make an amazing podcast i think it would just be a very fun thing that you could do as a podcast um so I was trying to think of what other what what games could we play as part of a podcast, and so that's something yeah. that I've been putting out there. So if anybody has any ideas, I would really like to produce a podcast, I mean, I, a guest based podcast you, with with it's a game show of some kind. Are you thinking more general subject matter? Or you want something like nerdy, or like, I don't um, care. Like TTRPG themed because you and I did that mash game, which I thought was really fun. That was fun, uh, yeah, but it's not really a game show. That's not really a, a contestants th- against assumed, each other type I of thing. I assumed you meant something like almost like a variety show where you'd have a couple uh, of different Maybe, segments. that's possible, but I'm more looking, I think I want to kind of focus on doing a uh, uh, a, a show with with where we bring on guests and do, uh, do kind of a comp- competition. We'll maybe get some sponsors yeah. to produce some prizes. And, uh, you know, and that's what I'm looking like, for. Uh, like something like Rooster Teeth does that with their cast. They, they cool. do sort of out of character kind of like variety show or like game show stuff. There's a show that I think College Humor does that is called Well Actually, which is they get a bunch of people that are super nerdy about a particular thing and then they give them facts in which there is something wrong about the thing they have stated. And then they have to push the buzzer and go, well, actually. Matt Mercer was on that, to- right? Oh, was he? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure Mercer was on that. He was talking about they did a D and D question. I only saw the clips. I haven't watched the full yeah. episode. Well, they yes, don't they they don't do the full one. They have a preview on YouTube, and then they want you to subscribe to Dropout, yeah. which is their subscription service to watch the which, full episode. I'm not sure if that's still I, around or not. I know that there was a big Dropout's around. Okay. It's just um some like Drawfy breaks my heart. I follow Drawfy. You should all watch Drawfy. Yeah. They're amazing artists. Uh, that every week they release like sort of premise videos of them all doing art together and it's delightful uh they recently did one where they each anthropomorphized each other's home states so they went okay you're from texas and he just drew a very big person <laughs> like everything's big in texas they're they're delightful um uh, but that would be exactly the type of thing i'm all i could also yeah. definitely do uh wouldn't mind doing something for for um um you know, Twitch either, but I just, I would really like to do something more like comp- competitive and, and kind of a game show. I mean, that's a good example of um, something that could be an hour and, and would be easy to digest and, yeah. and could be fun to do on Twitch. And less. I was probably... thinking, I was thinking 30 minutes you could do probably oh, do yeah. pretty well. And, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. We'll, we're going to see. Uh, but if anybody has any ideas for games to play that aren't already popular shows on some other channel, uh, that would yeah. be a great one. That's the, that's the only thing is every time I come up with something, I'm like, Oh, Someone's it's already, already somebody, yeah, somebody's already doing yeah. that. Okay, well, that's all right. Which I know there's nothing new Pitch under the sun. Movies. and fun. That's you know, a fun idea. Yeah. Movie pitching? Movie pitching is a good one. I wouldn't even mind basing it off of some some game, but it's got to, you know, really having some sort of competitive edge to it. Um, sure. I thought about, you know, doing a um, almost something like uh, like QI, Dream but Rants. Nerdsmith related or nerdy sure. related, which might be fun. or A movie pitch from randomly selected cards. <laughs> I do have that cinema game. I have a Six Degrees game that I need to bring to WonderCon because some people would be good at that game. Uh, Andy's terrible at that game, and I'm the only one who's good at it, and so I always look for people who are good at it. Um, It's like uh, directors, actors, characters, quotes, and film titles, and you basically play dominoes trying to connect them. Like, this person was in this movie... And this person directed it, but then the director also did this movie. Like, you're trying to put all your cards down to, to connect them all together. And, and it's a really fun game. I like it. Um, but I, like, I never... Oh, good. I was going to say, I like the movie pitch idea a lot. I think that would one could do, maybe not for this particular, but I think that would just be a fun thing to do to put out weekly and to put out to Twitter to be like, okay, which one of these movies would you watch? You know, like get get two, two different Pick groups of people. Pick one and we'll people. make a movie poster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, um, right. but yeah, get, get like two, two groups of, of two or two groups of three or something. And then you're on teams and each one of you 
you know, gets these these random cards to create a movie from, and I think that's a great idea. You have to you have to pick like what artist did the Oscar nominated original song at the end credits for the oh, that's, film. That's good. Yeah. So you so you need a you need a you need a music. You person. have to put a press kit together for yeah. this movie that you're given these random elements to it. Um, I love it. I I very much enjoy that. But that is, in my opinion, what the Power Hour should be for, is like, let's schedule a Power Hour to test a concept um, and just like basically pilot it and then see if we want to do an episode like that. Or just have the show like every so often we do do an hour of something and and we we just decide, okay, I feel like playing this game. We have some guests lined up. Let's play this this week on the Power Hour kind of thing. Um, hello welcome um so so yeah i thought i thought that was funny the the pitch movies idea is good um i had something oh i never i i never was so close to buying dropout as when college humor did a well actually episode um that was all about broadway musicals um and they had rachel bloom on to do it uh from crazy ex-girlfriend and uh i was good at every question <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I didn't think I knew that much about Broadway, but apparently I do, because I was I was I was very good at answering those questions. Um, I almost wanted to, to get it at that point. I'm like, I want to watch more of this. I want more questions. I enjoyed this, um, but it's like it's like my it's like my dad watching Jeopardy, and he like, or maybe not Jeopardy, but like my dad watching the History Channel. It's like you know all this stuff. Why are you watching a show about it? You're fact checking the television show. Why are you doing this? It's like, no, you like to watch stuff you, you know about. Um, <laughs> John Mulaney hosted SNL this weekend and his monologue was about dads and it mm -hmm. made me laugh so hard because it was literally my father. <laughs> That's funny. It was like they only they know they read all about World War II and they don't have the, you, your dad doesn't have any friends. Your mom has friends, and your mom's friends have husbands. None of them are friends. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Uh, yeah. There were other things that were slightly more politically twinged that were also 100% accurate, but I won't uh, <laughs> I won't air that stuff. Um, but yeah. So, what else do we have to talk about? My, oh. my room is absolutely full of makeup and lighting because I've been doing so much cosplay and video production lately. <laughs> I wanted to get I don't, I almost got um light gels okay to put in front of my ring lights but then I ended up at a discount store and found go behind your TV LED light strips that were multicolored and had little remotes and they were 5 bucks a strip and I was like okay 6 foot for 5 bucks I'll do it so I have two of them now that have these little remotes on them and, my old uh, lighting setup that's what that's what those yeah. are yeah there's they're they're adhesive and I need to I I'm I don't necessarily want to stick them on things, but the tape is starting to come off, like the backing tape. So I think I need to like just put something to stick them to just so that there's a, a backing to them. But yeah. I have a plug in my wall that has a USB port on it. And so I have these USB extender cables going across my room to plug it into the wall so that's because they're USB powered. Oh, okay. um, so so I'm plugging them in like in all these random places. I'm, I'm using half my cell phone chargers to, to plug these lights in. Um, but but it's been working really well. They flash in different colors, which turns out really good for mimicking a nightclub. Like very good for like just having like having a having a whitewash on the front like a key light, but then behind me is almost black, and then there's these colors flashing, and it looks like being in a club. Uh, nice. So it worked out really well for some set stuff it. I was doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I have a lot of uh, cool creative stuff that I'm working on, and I'm feeling empowered to uh, to work on Nerdsman stuff, which I'm excited. Yeah, I love it. I'm just glad that we, you know, I mean, there's, we're not slowing down with shenanigans by any means, but there's a lot of the one time lead up work that is done now. Yes. Now it's just a matter of kind of maintenance and keeping things going. So we can start working on other shows and, and, and new ideas and stuff. And I really want to, this year, I really want to focus a lot on podcasting. I, I want to get back into more podcasting. Um, I want to do, uh, you know, a, a podcast or two myself. And um, I've got some, some things lined up um, that, I, that I really want to do. Excuse me. I don't know why I said that. I wasn't on the mic. I don't know. But I'm nothing if not polite. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what time is it? 
So, how about we go into the cash corner? Early. All right. A little early. Not much. Hey, you know, we'll get a little on. We'll have this. We have five minutes. What do you want to talk about for five minutes? Well, I was going to say that hmm, five minutes. What do you guys want to talk about for five for minutes? Five minutes. <laughs> we don't normally yeah, run out of stuff to talk about. That's kind of weird. Let's talk about running out of stuff to talk about. I'm not out of stuff to talk about. I mean, Bye, I have resorted... I have resorted to We're not doing a around room. my room for things to talk about. But, uh, oh, um, I'm... I'm out this host right here. His name is Paul Revere. Paul Revere. He was the host the of the... Horse. See, that's the problem. We can't sync up. The horse that, that was last year. Ghost horse. Ghost, Ghost horse. horse. Um, no, gonna see, what soon. I got stuck in... I know. What, yeah, the McElroy's. By the way, it's very important that everybody knows that Google Assistant has McElroy brother reactions to things. If you tell Google Assistant, shrimp heaven now, it will post an emoji of a shrimp and go, we can't keep doing this. So if you have seen Mabim, if you have heard Mabim Bam, my brother, my brother and me, it's so good. So um, good. I, I mean, I I'm currently have listening, listening to their 500th episode. I got about halfway through it as of this morning. It is incredible. Um, I they they they're all in one house. They're all talking. They're all they're all have their, they've had uh, they had their dad on. They've had their wives on, mm -hmm. and only uh, only Travis's wife was able to even name a single episode of the show. Would put on the spot. I was like, <laughs> and I fear we would upset those of uh, those people in our or in our network that take tarot slightly more reverently. <laughs> By doing fake tarot, I I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that with the uh, with anybody who might be uh, more uh, pagan inclined. <laughs> you know that tarot was originally <laughs> just a fifth suit, and it was they were used as trump cards. Interesting. Tarot the okay all right. So with that in mind, tarot the musical is actually a very interesting idea, and now I'm gonna let that circulate in my brain a bit. Um, and then give it to people who would do it with more justice. I was gonna, yeah, <laughs> and then and then and then give those ideas but, to other people. Yeah, um, I am very intrigued by that idea, though. Hmm. Uh, Speaking you, you on an something. actually unrelated note, if anybody out there is really into role playing and also is a uh, composer, writer, music writer, singer, I am looking for you, or if you know anyone, it's not a director of Nerdsmith. Because they're already like, too busy. I was like, uh, uh, well, speaking speaking of music, um, I am. This is accountability time. I am um, your accountability am, buddy. Yes, I am working on. Uh, good question. Uh, do they have? Yes, to be adult of age, legal please. Age? Yeah, sorry. Um, I am currently commissioned to write a song for an animated show. Um, that got kickstarted last year. Nice. I think it was last year. Um, I'm writing a theme song for them, and I'm. You did. How? I. I did what? I could enjoy you more as a person. What? Right now. It's delightful. I see. I see um, another call in our future. <laughs> um, but yeah. So um, so I'm I'm currently writing lyrics. I'm a little stuck. I if anyone has any motivation please i always turn to kyle to kyle when i need lyric yeah. help i turn to kyle yeah i like this this is not so much like par obviously it's not like parody lyrics or like funny lyrics i'm trying to like write oh this very don't go to kyle i'm trying to write this like very sincere sad thing um but i just keep hitting a wall of like this is garbage maybe um, bounce off of will crossway yeah that's what i was thinking mm. um i or well, um uh, Justin um, uh, in Noir Enigma is a new person we're, okay. we're team talks with to bring onto the network. We're in, in in some particular show, he is a singer songwriter, uh, mm -hmm. so he is he's he might be somebody you can work with as well. He's done some really nice, soft kind of. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to say depressing. That's not the point. That's not the right word, but sad songs. Yeah. So so yeah, I'm working on it. I'm I'm. Every time I think about it, I get excited, but then I keep looking at what I've written and I get, I, I hit a wall. So I'm kind of trying to, you know, rev my lyrical engine again, trying to get more in the mood of, of writing. And what does that uh, sound like? Me, 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 me. Don't rave me if I have so long. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, uh, um, it was really neat though. It was, it, it's been a really cool experience because um, they, they gave me... <laughs> Uh, like basically a big rundown of the show and the characters and then they gave me the pilot script so I could actually read it and then 
we talked a lot about theme and what they wanted it to say and and it was a neat creative process to kind of get an idea um and i'm really proud of the music i've already composed i got fl studio and started actually recording music with it uh and it's been really cool actually producing music so um that's Very a neat cool. little side project and i'm trying to get it done i really want to get paid <laughs> more importantly but but i do i do want to do the song justice so, speaking uh, yeah. of getting paid speaking of getting paid look at that we're getting real good at this um so really really quick we're gonna go through cash corner you've been watching the nerdsmith power hour which means we are a part of nerdsmith logan and i are both directors on the network uh nerdsmith is a kick-ass group of people uh creators of the nerdy persuasion making podcasts and live streams and lots of digital content for you to enjoy if you like what you've seen today and you haven't yet please consider backing us on patreon uh at patreon.com nerdsmith all of your uh donations go towards supporting our in-house nerdsmith shows and we try to share the wealth with our um our external shows as well so that they can um, also get some benefit from our amazing uh, our amazing viewers and audience. So uh, please take a look and uh, and we hope you enjoy the cool bonus content that we put up, um, which I have to follow up on and put some more up because I forgot to last week. Um, but uh, we have a lot of bonus content that is coming forthcoming from uh, from some of our shows and we're always on the lookout for more fun things to do for uh, exclusive stuff for you guys for being so awesome and helping us to make a go of this we've been doing this for two years now we're really excited about our third year and and we want to we want to keep doing awesome stuff and to do that we kind of need your help um and we appreciate everything last night was amazing we had a really great support we had a bunch of raids on the shenanigans stream first and people... level five hype train yeah man i didn't donate and i'm mad because it was unicorn emojis Oh no! I was, so upset. I was like, no, I could have had a unicorn train. Like there were pieces. It was very disorienting. <laughs> yeah, well, every time you hit a hype train, you only get one the highest piece that you don't have. So you you still uh, have to go the on the same hype train. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha, you still have to go on the same gotcha. hype train multiple times. So right now, I only have the griffin, so I have a bird head. Yeah. Um, I give it wings when I put it in Aww. the chat. Um, so that's the Nerdsmith Network. You can find more about us at nerdsmith.org. Yep. You can find out more about us as a network and our shows that are affiliated with us and our friends of the network who are some cool people that we also think you should check out. Um, and we are sponsored by two incredibly cool companies run by incredibly nice people. Uh, Die Hard Dice makes really, really amazing polymer and metal dice sets. They are beautiful colors beautiful designs the metal dice will make your table scared of you and they're just really well crafted and they are delightful people who are really really generous and really thoughtful um it, it feels really nice to get products from a company that the people seem to genuinely be um very no. considerate of their customers so i, I very much appreciate die hard dice um and you should roll with the best die hard dice um, and if you use right now, we still have this code and we will at some point ask them to change it. But if you have not yet purchased from Die Hard Dice using our code, our coupon code is DRPG, uh, type F for Discover RPG Power Hour. Um, but uh, if you use DRPG on your next purchase, you will get 15%. Thank you, Logan. Uh, yes. You get 15% off your next purchase at Die Hard Dice. So please. Use the code because that lets them know that we sent you and and that um, helps us with our sponsor. They're just, they they kind of know where uh, where we're putting our effort into to get the word out about them. And, and, you know, we like them and we like you. So we want you to have 15% off. You're welcome. Um, and so also we are sponsored by World Anvil. World Anvil is an amazing, different, different adjective the most robust campaign management software on the internet today. Uh, they are a repository for any kind of fiction world building that you want to do, whether that's RPG campaigns or novel writing or anything in between that spectrum. You can find some really amazing tools to visualize and expand on your world and share it with other people. Uh, it is free to use uh, to make an account. You get a lot of amazing features right off the bat with a free account. But if you're interested in personalizing your World Anvil account, uh, themes, custom URLs, different ways of interacting with your audience, uh, you can sign up to become a guild member. Guild members get some exclusive access to updated stuff. 
um, updated features on the website. They get to help vote on ideas for the website, and they have some really, really cool uh, additional features that um, that they get as a virtue of helping to support World Anvil. Um, the people who run it are incredible. Their community is really, really great. I highly recommend you check out their Discord channel. Um, but you can find out more at worldanvil.com. And as we always like to do, light up the forge. Light it up. Light it up. Ba, ba, ba. Um, anyway, uh, so those are our sponsors. This is the Cash Corner, and you have been watching the Nerdsmith Power Hour. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on your lunch break or your soup break, as it is, uh, or depending on which one it is. And we hope that you will check us out next week. Same time, same place. Wednesdays, noon PST, right? Noon PST, 3 p.m. Eastern, here on We Are Nerdsmith on Twitch. Uh, you can find us on the internet at nerd. Uh, we Are Nerdsmith on Twitter. So come hang out with us. Tweet at us. Ask us questions. Give us ideas for what to talk about on the show. And we will see you next week. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. And please do us both a favor and be good to each other. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.